this is Chris of Light and Joy Designs and welcome back to the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make the ruched scarf. And these two scarfs may look the same at first glance, but when we take a look at them up close, one is made in Tunisian crochet, simple stitch, and the other one is made in regular crochet in single crochet. This is the 19th pattern of the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour, which is a year-long crochet along where I teach you a new pattern each week along with a free downloadable PDF. Um, the link to joining that is in the description below. In part one, I'm going to teach you how to make this scarf in Tunisian crochet. And in part two, that's this one here. And in part two, I'm going to teach you how to make it in regular crochet. For this pattern, we are going to need a yarn needle, a measuring tape, scissors, some yarn. I'm using a number three weight yarn called Baby Bee Baby Lulu in the color lilac. This is available at Hobby Lobby. And then um, another yarn that would work well for this is uh, Yarn Bee Delish Boutique, which is also a number three yarn. And then uh, for for the regular, for both the regular crochet and the Tunisian crochet, we're using a nine millimeter crochet hook. And you can use, if you're making this as a scarf as opposed to um, a wrap or a shawl, you can use a regular crochet hook even for the Tunisian crochet. You'll just need to put a rubber band on the end. Um, or you can use a Tunisian crochet hook and I use the Denise set and I'll have a link to that in the description below and in the pattern. These are awesome. They're adjustable or interchangeable where you, you have a bunch of these different kind of ends to make them longer or shorter and um, they're just really cool. So if you have a moment before we get started to give this video a thumbs up, if you like free videos, that helps me out a lot. Thank you. Now, before you begin the pattern, what I would encourage doing is doing some swatching. And um, your or so what I would say is just watch the video just um, through to get an idea of how it works. And then, so if you're using like a different yarn than what I'm using or a different size hook, experiment with that yarn and hook to see what you like um, as far as, you know, do you like the look that you're getting? So, you know, make a 10 stitch or, you know, make a 10 stitch swatch to see if you like how it's turning out. Um, you know, because you might want to make a swatch with a couple of different size hooks to see what look you like best. Also, there's going to be some different um, options that you have. So in this pattern, the panels are worked in rows of five, five rows, five rows, and so on. And you may want to work yours, you know, three, 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 or maybe five, three, five, three, or something like that. So um, doing some swatching, doing some experimenting before you start is a great way to um, make this pattern your own and uh, maybe make it something different. So just wanted to put that out there to give that a try before uh, starting to do some swatching. Also, if you're a true beginner, you may also um, want to make this pattern, or at least your swatching, in a very plain acrylic yarn. 
something that's very easy to work with because uh, this yarn being fuzzy is a it's a little bit harder to see the stitches um, so for a beginner that might be a little challenging so if that's the case I would recommend at least swatching to start out with um, you know some kind of a, a plain very easy to see yarn and then um, you could even make your your whole scarf in that you know easier you know non fuzzy yarn um, just something to think about but otherwise this pattern is definitely something that a beginner could could give a, a shot at whether you're doing the Tunisian version or the regular crochet version. For this pattern, we are going to be working our scarf like this, back and forth in this way. So for both the part one in Tunisian crochet and part two in regular crochet, we're if you're making it as a scarf we're going to work with 25 stitches and that's going to give you a scarf that is approximately 10 inches wide so this portion here is going to be 10 inches wide and this is 25 stitches to start now you'll be able to work this scarf as many rows as you would like to make it as long or as short as you like. If you want this pattern to be a wrap, you can start with a wider amount and work back and forth. Or you also have the option <coughs> Um, for either, well, probably it would only work well for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the wrap. You could start with a very long um, starting edge and work back and forth this way. So for these, your 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 ruche sections are going to be like this and the same with if you do it as a wrap these are your this is what I'm referring to as the ruched sections these where you have these ripples um, and if you work it this way your ruched sections are going to be lengthwise and so on before we begin the pattern I want to show you something about it you have the option to start this pattern the way that I did which is to start it with the 25 stitches and you'll have your flat panel and then a ruche panel, a flat panel, and so on. Um, or if you want, you can start with a, a ruched panel, and I'll tell you how to do that, um, and then work that way. Um, what I did was I, I started with the flat panel, and I ended with a ruched panel. So I have two different ends, and you can choose whichever way you like. If you're going to start with the flat panel, you're going to chain 25 to start. And if you're going to start with the ruched panel so that you have a, um, a ripple on the end, you're going to start with a chain of 48. And of course, if you want to make it as a wrap, uh, either working this way or working this way, you can adjust your starting chain to whatever length you want. Um, if you're going to start with a flat panel, um, start with a length of chain that you want 
your your shawl or your wrap to be and if you're starting working this way you're going to start with a a chain of how high or or yeah how high or deep you want your your wrap or shawl to be if you want to start these with a ruched edge then what you're going to do is you're going to want your your chain your starting chain to be double the length that you want your shawl to be and the same for this measurement here if you want to start with a ruched edge you're going to chain an amount that is double the length that you want this side to be if you're starting with a ruched panel, one of a, a ruffle panel, you're going to start with a chain of 48 and you're going to follow the same instructions that I give for the flat panel where you're going to work five rows of Tunisian simple stitch. And when you get to the end of that, you're going to um, wait until I've finished my ruched edge and then you'll be able to see how to then switch back to the back to the flat panel. So just watch the next demonstration of how to do the Tunisian simple stitch and you're going to do that with your with your 48 stitches for five rows. Okay, so as I mentioned, you can use a regular crochet if you're making this as a scarf, and I will do that so that you can see how that looks. So to start, we're going to make a slip knot. Just going to cross over a loop and then pull the yarn up through there. And then put that on your hook. And now we're going to chain 25, or if you're making the ruched edge, the ruffled edge, to start, you will chain 48. So to chain, we just yarn over and pull through that loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook, all the way till you have 25 stitches. Once you have 25 stitches, we're going to work into the back bump of our, the second chain from our hook. So in the front of the chain we have these V's and in the back we have these back bumps. And we're going to work into the second one. So you're going to go into that back bump, snug up this loop here so it's not loose yarn over and pull up a loop. We're now beginning our forward pass and we're going to be building up loops on our hook. So then we're just going to go into the back bump of each of the chains across the way. Just being sure to keep all the chains, sorry, all the loops uniform as we go along. And this um, pattern is worked obviously with a thin yarn and a larger hook so it's going to have kind of an airy feel to it. <clears throat> so just keep looking, here's your V's on the side, <clears throat> keep looking for that back bump behind and go into each one of those and work all the way to the end until you have 25 loops on your hook. All right, so there we have 25 loops on our hook. And so I, I told you that you could do this with a regular crochet hook and, and you can. So we just finished our forward pass. And the reason why we were working into those back bumps is because you can see it's going to form this really nice bottom edge to our project. So now we're ready to begin our return pass in Tunisian crochet. Every row is worked uh, with two passes. The forward pass where you build up loops 
and then the reverse pass where you remove those loops or you work them off. So for the reverse pass, a normal reverse pass or, um, or regular reverse pass or return pass it goes like this. You yarn over and pull through one. That creates your edge stitch. And then from here on out, we yarn over and pull through two loops. So the first one was a yarn over, pull through one loop. Then we did yarn over, pull through two loops. And then we just continue to do yarn over, pull through two loops. All the way back. And if you started with a different number of chains, you should have had that number of loops on your hook at the end of your forward pass. So if you want to check that, you can. It's always easier to check your count as you go than to realize it later. But this pattern is actually pretty forgiving. So if you do um, if you do miss a, a stitch or lose a stitch along the way, it's, will, it will pretty much be okay, but you can always add them back in if you need to. Or frog, but that's, I try to avoid that at all costs. Okay, so we just finished our foundation row or row one. And you can see that we have our starting chain down here. These are our V's, or we have a nice edge here. Then we have our front vertical bar and our back vertical bar. And then at the top, we have another chain that was created by our reverse pass. And you can see we have these V's again. And watch this, turn it over. There's your back bumps as well, just like on our starting chain. We're not going to use those in this pattern. Oh, actually, we will be actually using the front V's when we get to the ruching part. And these are called the, this would be called the top horizontal bar, and this would be called the bottom horizontal bar. This is the front vertical bar, and back here is the back vertical bar. This would be the space in between. Use that on other types of stitches. Okay, so let's take a look at how we work row two. So for row two, and we're working in Tunisian simple stitch here, this first loop that's on your hook is your first stitch. So it corresponds with this first vertical bar. So we're not gonna work into that. We're going to start with our second vertical bar we're going to go under that vertical bar, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And throughout your Tunisian work, just always make sure that your loops are uniform. And generally speaking, you want to make sure they're not too tight. Um, but this one we're working with thin yarn and a large hook so that won't be a problem in this pattern. So we go under that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. We go under that vertical bar, yarn over, and pull up a loop. You can see this was our the vertical bar we were just in. Here's our next one. And you're just going to work all the way down. And yes, this is going to be a little bit loose because of working with the thin yarn and the large hook. Or it's a large hook for this yarn. And you just just move the stitches down as you go every so often. And see, I kind of hold the work behind my middle finger 
it gives me something to rest the hook on as I go under that, especially when the work is at the beginning, when it's a little more flimsy. Helps to make it a little easier to get under that vertical bar. Okay, so now we're at the end. We're at our last edge stitch. <clears throat> and it's a little harder to see it because it is fuzzy yarn, but you can see it. We have three threads here. We have these two outer threads that cross over, and we have this inner thread, which is essentially like the, the front vertical bar and the back vertical bar. So for this edge stitch, what we're going to do is instead of going under just that front vertical bar, we're going to go under both the, this one and this one, those two outer threads, and we go on top of this inner thread. So we go under there, the edge stitch, and just yarn over and pull up that last loop. At this stage, you can count your loops. Make sure you have the same number of loops as starting chains. And now we're ready to do our reverse pass. So as before, we start out with a yarn over and pull through one loop. And then the rest of the way is yarn over, pull through two loops, pull through one, two loops, all the way back to the end. Okay, so I finished the reverse pass there. And so we've done two rows. And the way that you can tell your rows is you'll have, you'll have your rows that look like this, where you'll, you'll see this chain going through the vertical bars. And then your last row will have these open spaces your in between your vertical bars. And that counts as a row. Also, if you lose track, you can turn your work to the side and you can count these V's on the side. And you can see we have one, two. So we've done two rows. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and work three more of these rows. And then I'll meet you back here for doing the ruched section. I am going to show you the edge stitch one more time. I'm at the end of my third row and so you can see these edge stitches. There's the first row, second, and third. And we have our two outer, outer threads and we have this inner thread right here. We're going to go on top of that inner thread and underneath the two outer threads, oops, I missed it there, on top of that inner thread and under the two outer threads to do the last edge stitch. Just wanted to show you that one more time. And then you'll just begin your reverse pass from here. So I just thought I would show you also the return pass just a few tips about that. Um, when I do the first stitch, you want to just make sure that when you're pulling through that yarn that it's about the same height as the loop that's on your hook. So you don't want it to be super tight and you don't want it to be super loose. You want this loop to be the same size as all the other loops. And when you pull through that, that loop, you want it to be at the same height as that last loop. So that's our yarn over pull through one loop. And then for the rest, what I like to do is I, I'll hold this to kind of keep it from getting out of shape. And then I do my yarn over pull through one. And, and just like with these loops, you want your, your chains on the reverse pass 
to be uniform as well. You don't want them too big too or too tight. You want them just right. You want them just the size of your, your hook. So what I do is I just, um, after I complete a stitch, I just kind of move my thumb and middle finger up to hold the work. And I just find that that works well for me. You may find a different way to hold it that works better for you, but that's how I do it. So we have five rows here. Let's take a look at this. We've got our first row. You can see that first row of chains underneath those vertical bars. Second row, third row, fourth row, and then you kind of go, hmm, what is this stuff over here? This is your this is your latest worked row. This is our fifth row. And again, we can check that on the side. We can count our V's on the side. One, two, three, four, five. So we've worked five rows of Tunisian Simple Stitch of our flat panel. We're ready to begin the ruched panel. And uh, before we start that, I just wanted to give credit where I learned this, which is a book called uh, The Railway Knitting Workbook um, by Della Wilkins. And I will have a link to that in the description below and also in the pattern. Um, she has some really cool stitches in there that you might like to also check out. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be doubling our stitches for every stitch except for the first stitch and our edge stitch and our last stitch. So the way that we're going to do that is before each stitch we are going to work into the top horizontal bar. We're going to work a stitch into the top horizontal bar before each of the vertical bar stitches. So again you can see our chain. You can see the V's of the chain here in the front. This top thread is called the top horizontal bar. This one down here is called the, the lower or bottom horizontal bar. We're going to go underneath this horizontal bar. The first one's always a little flimsy, so don't worry about that. That's normal for it to feel like that. Just go under that. I like to make sure I snug up my, um, my first loop because they have a tendency to get loose. And if those get loose, then you get this kind of elongated edge on the side. So I, I went into that top horizontal bar. I yarned over and I'm going to pull up a loop. Now I'm going to go into the vertical bar and do a regular Tunisian simple stitch and we've increased by one stitch. So we're going to do that again for the next stitch. We're going to go into this top horizontal bar. It's technically a, a simple stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. It's a simple stitch worked into the top horizontal bar or TSS-THB for top horizontal bar. And then we work into the vertical bar. So for every one of these vertical bars, we're going to work a stitch right before it into the top horizontal bar. And if you started with 25 stitches at the end, we are going to, we will have doubled all of them except for two. So we will have doubled 23 stitches. So that'll be 46 plus our beginning stitch and our end stitch. That'll be 46 plus two. So at the end, you should have 48 stitches on your hook. So just continue in this way all the way to the end. You just work a regular end stitch. I'll meet you there for the end stitch. 
And as you're going along, your loops are going to build up faster because you're, you're doubling your numbers. So just move them down as you go and um, don't get worried as your hook gets full. That's normal. Just look for that top bar. Go under that top bar. I'm just letting you watch me do this so that as the loops build up, you can see what it's looking like for me so that you'll know what it should look like for you. And if you've got the hang of it, you can just kind of fast forward to the end. Oop, this yarn is a little slippery. And it, and it is a little tight as you're working into this top horizontal bar. The, just for this first row as you, when you do the first doubling. Alright, I just worked into the top horizontal bar before this second to last stitch. I'm going to work in that last horizontal bar. Now we're at our edge stitch. We're not going to double at the edge. So we're just going to work right into that edge stitch. Remember we've got our two threads here on the end. You can see them there, the front one and the back one. And this is the inside thread, the third thread. I'm going to go on top of that inside thread and under these two outside threads. Yarn over and pull up a loop, making sure it's the same height as all the others. Now we're just going to work a return pass the same as we did with our flat panel. That doesn't change. So we're just going to yarn over, pull through one loop, and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way back to the end. And of course you will have nearly, almost twice the amount of loops to go through. And that's what's going to cause the ruching effect, the rippling effect. And I'll meet you there at the end. Because you have a lot more loops on your hook as you're coming back, um, they can get a little scrunched up. So you might like accidentally pull it through too many. You can just keep them, you can keep them from getting too bunched up by keeping this pulled, your, some of your work pulled down. And just kind of push it up as you go. Uh, like all of crochet, it's, it's kind of a mixture of, you know, art and science. Science is the technique, and then the art is how you do it and find kind of your way that feels good for you. All right, so here we are at the end, and let's take a look at how that first row of ruching looks. So you can see we've got our ripple there. And if we look at it, now we'll be able to see the fifth the fifth row of our of our flat panel. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And so what we're going to do, we just worked one row of ruching panel. We're going to work four more of these, but we only increase on that first row. So from for the next four rows, you're just going to work Tunisian simple stitch in each one of the vertical bars all the way to the end. 
and then your return pass will be the same as always, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end until you just have one loop left on your hook. So go ahead and work four more rows into just the vertical bars and I'll meet you at the end of that to show you how we transition back to the next flat panel. And for people who started with a ruching panel, that's where you'll learn how to go into the, the flat panel next. All right, so I have just finished my fifth row and let's take a look at being able to detect exactly where you are. So we can see here, here's our flat panel and here's our ruched panel. And you may say, okay, I'm having trouble seeing where the ruching starts. What you want to do is you want to look for where the last row where you had just these um, where these stitches match up. You can see here in this row we start get a, getting a stitch right in between the two vertical bars. So our stitch is doubled here in this row. So that's our first row of the ruching row. So we have one, two, three, four, and this one here is our fifth one. Okay, so in Tunisian crochet, your last row before you do the bind off looks a little funny like this. So you might think that you only have four rows, one, two, three, four, of the ruching, but you actually have, this is your fifth one. Okay, so now we're ready to start the transition back to another flat panel row. And this is actually my favorite one because I think it's a little fun to do. So for those of you who started with a ruching row, now you're going to know how you're going to join us now for doing your first flat panel row. And what we're going to do is for each of the two stitches, we're going to be combining them back together into one. So except for, of course, our first and last stitch. Those just stay the same throughout the pattern. So the way that we do that is it's really simple, really easy. Instead of going under just one vertical bar, we go under two vertical bars. And then we yarn over and pull up a loop, and we've just decreased by one stitch. So you just do that all the way across going under one, two vertical bars, and sometimes you have to just kind of look a little carefully. Did I miss a stitch there? Nope. Okay, there's one. And two, one and two, one and two, one, two. I love this row because <laughs> I love how it um, gets smaller. And I know that my next five rows or the next four rows after this are going to be easy because it's going to be half the amount of stitches. So we're almost here at the end. And just kind of feed those down as needed. And then we have our last two. And then we're going to do our edge stitch. Now, if for some reason you get to the end and let's say you only have one stitch left, that means you either 
added an extra one somewhere or dropped one somewhere along the way. And um, the way to figure that out is to count your stitches. So I, sh if you started with whatever you started with on the flat panel, you should have the same number again. So for me, that would be 25. If you have, let's say you, um, you missed a stitch and you have, well, let's do our edge stitch. Well, actually, let's wait bef before we do our edge stitch. So before doing the edge stitch, we should have 24 loops. And let's say you had, you know, just one here and you only had 23 loops here and you missed a stitch somewhere along the way. Then what I would recommend doing is instead of doubling up the last two, just just go into one and then one. So do one stitch in each of the last two um, instead of trying to go back and figure out where you missed the stitch because um, unless it was like, you know, unless you can see it really clearly, it's probably not worth doing it because it just really won't even show up. Um, if you have too many stitches, you can always, um, if you like, well, yeah, if you have too many stitches, you would still have one here. Um, and your count here would be 25 before the edge stitch. And if that was the case, um, you could just work that one. And then when you go to do your next row, you could work the first two stitches together to get you back to your count of 25. So now I'm just going to do my edge stitch going in under these two outer threads and I'm under the inner thread. You can see it right there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I'm just going to work a normal return pass. Yarn over, pull through one and then yarn over, pull through two. Just make sure that, especially on this row, that your return pass, you know, that your chains don't get elongated. You want them to be just the right size according to the hook. You know, just keep those chains the same. And what I usually like to do is, so here's the, the hook from where I just finished, sorry, the loop from where I just finished. I like to make sure that this guy that's going to be stitched together isn't too far away from it so it doesn't get elongated. And the reason is we want this row to be tightened up. We want it to be less long, less wide rather, than our ruched rows so that we have that, that definition. So there we go. Now you can really, now you can really see the ripples that come from the ruching. So now what you're going to do is just work four more of these rows and then you will, um, and then you'll work another panel of this row, sorry, another ruching panel, the same way that you did this one and so on. You'll just continue to work that um, until you have it the length that you want. And then um, I'm going to work <clears throat> another panel, another flat panel, and I'm going to show you how to do the bind off. Because when you, <clears throat> when you finish your last row in Tunisian crochet, you can see that we have all these spaces. So we have to do a bind off row where we work that last row. So I'll meet you back here when I have four more of these rows. So I want to show you how to determine uh, how, you know, are you ready to start your next panel or not? And um, being able to see where you're at. So you may have said, you know, you may have done a few rows and you say, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to go to a ruching row or do I have more of the flat panel rows to do? So the way to look at that is look for where 
your your two togethers were. This is a Tunisian simple stitch two together. You see those V's there? So that's our last row of the ruching row. And we can we can count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five of the ruching rows, and they end with a with these V's. So that means we start counting the next rows for our flat panel. So we have one, two, three. This one is four. So that means, oh, okay, I need to do one more because I'm doing five rows for each of my panels. All right, so now I have my fifth row. I can see here is the last row of my ruching row because I've got these V's here. So I'm going to count from the next row up, one, two, three, four, and then this weird one is my fifth row. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm at the end of my scarf, and this is the length that I want it to be, and I'm going to end it on a flat row. You can certainly end yours on a ruching row. Um, the bind off is exactly the same. So what you do is you start by going into the vertical bar, the second vertical bar, just like as if you were going to be making a stitch. You yarn over and pull up one loop. And if you've ever done any knitting, you'll know that for the bind off, you just slip one through the other. And that's what we do here in Tunisian Simple Stitch. Go under that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, and slip stitch. And it's the, the one on the left to get slip stitched under the one on the right. Yarn over, pull up a loop, slip stitch. So you're just going to do that all the way to the end. So I'm here at the last stitch, the edge stitch. We do the same thing. We go under those two outer threads, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then we stitch, slip stitch that last one. We chain one, and then we're going to cut the yarn, and then pull that yarn through and that your scarf will be completed. So at this stage, um, you could put a, you know, you could put some kind of a fringe on here or a shell edging or any kind of edging. But what's really nice about Tunisian crochet is it finishes up with this beautiful edging built in that happens just automatically from the bind off. And the other neat thing is we have a matching edging at the bottom and on each of the sides we have these nice V's on all of our edging. So that's one of the nice advantages of Tunisian crochet. So I'm going to, um, in part two, I'm going to show you how to make this same scarf in single crochet, just regular crochet. And um, I hope that you liked this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please be sure to subscribe and click the notify bell because I have free patterns and more every week. Um, also in the description below is a link for joining the Crochet Magical Mystery Tour. And this way you'll be alerted every time that there is a new pattern, um, every time there's um, the monthly giveaways and there's more as well. So, um, and then lastly, um, if you do make this scarf, please put a link in the comments below with a link to where your picture is, whether that's on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, um, and speaking of those I'll have links to where you can follow me there and I have a um, 
a Facebook group where you can post your pictures if you want as well. So thank you for watching. I'm so glad you d joined me here today. There'll be some pictures at the end of this video. Stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.